It is impossible not to compare Carbon Studios The Wizards Enhanced Edition for PSVR with the recently released The Mage's Tale. Both games started life as PC VR games. Both are first person, both require you to use move controllers, both games have you play as a trainee wizard, and both games require you to kill orcs and goblins with an array of magic spells. But there is a difference between these two titles. The Mage's Tale had some excellent puzzles but some lacklustre combat, whereas in The Wizards the opposite is almost true, with a bigger focus on smooth combat that really pays off. So is this game worth your time? Let's jump right into the pumpkin review of The Wizards. So the story sees you, a young wizard, having his country of Meloria been invaded by dark forces. Now, these dark forces mostly take the form of goblins and orcs, though later on in the game they do diversify themselves a bit more and there's also a big bad wizard and a couple of bosses to be defeated along the way before you can finally put an end to the invasion of your country. Now on your journey you'll be guided by a disembodied voice who acts as tutor, narrator and as the game's only voiced character. This story is not Oscar based by any means but it gives you an excuse to toss fireballs at orcs, so it does its job. Light the lanterns to mark your way. I'd hate to start going in circles here. The gameplay of the wizards sees you traversing three main areas. Each area is broken down into stages, and each stage can be beaten in around 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how efficient you are at solving the few puzzles the game throws at you. The puzzles are probably the most disappointing aspect of the wizards. They aren't terrible by any means, but they are quite simplistic or can be completed by trial and error. You don't really feel very satisfied completing them, and you'll find yourself wanting to get back to where the wizards really shines, which is its combat. While on the default difficulty setting, enemies won't really pose any threat to you, it still doesn't stop the fact that combat is very fun. The Wizards really differentiates itself thanks to the fact that it has a gesture based magic system. Fireballs require a flick of the wrist. Summoning an ice bow will require you to swipe your arms across each other and my personal favourite, arcane missiles, require a slightly more complex motion to activate. Carbon Studios did a great job of making sure these gestures are easy to perform, even on the less precise move controllers compared to the PC VR's more advanced tracking. With the exception of one particular spell, which I never really got the hang of casting correctly, but I was never sure if that was a move controller issue or a me issue. They also did a great job with giving players plenty of choices in how they play. Standing or sitting, height adjustments, dominant hands, blinders, smooth and click turning and locomotion, all the comfort settings you could possibly want are here and Carbon Studios should be applauded for not overlooking these things like so many other studios still do to this day. While the Wizards can be completed in just a few hours, the game has been designed with replayability in mind. Now, Not only is there an arena mode that will give you unique challenges to complete to test your skills with, but the game also has Fate cards. Now, Fate cards are gameplay modifiers which you can just add in to whatever level you want to play in the hub area. Fate cards can be used to increase or decrease the difficulty and you can find them hidden throughout the game world if you have a keen enough eye. Playing with fate cards will have an impact on your end of level score, so increasing the difficulty will add a multiplier while decreasing it will do the opposite. So for those of you who are looking to beat their friends in the leaderboards, fate cards will be key. Unfortunately the wizards does have a couple of bugs that may put a dampener on your enjoyment. During my playthrough I encountered enemies who would freeze in place for example, but overall though the gameplay was very smooth and the gesture based magic system was enough to keep me pushing through the short campaign. If I had to describe the wizard's visuals in one word, I would say clean. I was playing on a PS4 Pro which does improve picture quality, so your mileage may vary on a standard PS4, but I never really noticed any aliasing, everything looked sharp, smashing statues and walls to pieces, summoning a shield, casting lightning from my fingertips, it all looked great for what the PS viewer can do. There were moments where I was able to wander into areas that looked very unfinished, where you can see under the game world and stuff stuff like that, and those moments did take me out of the experience a little bit, but they were few and far between.
audio was a little disappointing in The Wizards. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself walking around in complete silence. Now, silence can be an effective tool when used right, but it didn't feel right the times when I noticed it in The Wizards. Combat music is bombastic enough, and the enemies screaming behind me gave a good jump scare now and again, though by far my favourite aspect of the audio design in this game was the voice actor who played the narrator. His voice was a perfect fit for the role of wise mentor, and he delivered his lines believably. The Wizards is out today for $24.99 in either dollars or euros, and for that price it isn't too hard to recommend to anyone looking for a fun single player experience with replayability. The gesture system is this game's real selling point though, and the fade cards are a cherry on top. If you can look past the mediocre puzzles then this game could be right up your alley. 8.5 out of 10.